I got born again on the bed of sickness the 22nd day of April, 1933, at 20 minutes to 8 o'clock in the south bedroom of 405 North College Street in the city of McKinney, Texas. I'm 15, I'd be 16 in August. And my heart stopped. When my heart stopped, I felt the circulation cut, you know, faster than you can tell it, faster than you can snap your finger. Cut off my, my feet, my toes and my feet just went numb like you'd gone to sleep. And up to my knees and my stomach, my, and I leaped out of my body, and I began to, I began to descend. I was lying in bed. I'd been sick all the week. In fact, I'd been sickly all my life. Never ran and played like other little children. Well, limitedly, but not fully. And, and, and the doctors had been called. Doctors made house calls. But Dr. Wysong, old Dr. W.S. Wysong Sr., he was over at the hospital. Well, they contacted him there, and he said he'd come to our house as soon as he got through at the hospital, making his calls. So they're waiting for him to come. And Grandpa's clock struck 7.30. My heart stopped. Faster than I can tell you, the circulation cut off way down at the end of my, my toes just suddenly, like your feet go to sleep, they just went numb. Faster than I can tell it. My toes, my feet, my ankles, my knees, my hips, my stomach. And I leaped out of my body like a man would leap off of a diving board into a swimming pool. I leaped out of my body and I began to descend like you're going down in a well or in a cavern. And so I'm descending, feet first, descending, down, 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 until the lights of the earth faded away from above me, until darkness encompassed me around about. Darkness is so dark you couldn't see your hand if it's one inch in front of your face. Darkness, it was so dense that it seemed if you had a knife, you could just cut a chunk of it out. And the further down you went, the darker and the hotter it became. Till finally way down beneath me, on the wall of darkness, I could see fingers of light playing on the wall of darkness. And in a few seconds, it seemed like an eternity, but it had to be only a few moments. I came to the bottom of the pit. When I came to the bottom of the pit, there was some kind of a creature that met me. I never looked at it. I knew he was there. Uh, the reason I didn't look was that we approached the gates into hell itself, and that creature took me by the arm. Now, I didn't know till years later that the Word of God says in the book of Isaiah, hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee. And so that creature met me. But thank God, when he put his hand on my arm to escort me in, there was a voice that spoke. And I don't know what he said or how many words he spoke. When those words were spoken, that whole place just shook like there was an earthquake on. That creature took his hand off of my back. There was like a suction to my back part, and I came floating back, away from the gates of hell, floating back. And then I came up head first, floating up. I could see the lights of the earth before I came to the top of the pit. Then I came up on the porch outside the south bedroom. I could see the giant cedar trees there in the yard. I could see Grandpa's porch swing there on the porch. And then I seemed to just come right through the wall and jump inside my body like a man would slip his foot inside of his boot in the morning time. And when I got back inside my body, then I said to my grandmother, my voice, this natural voice picked up the word. I said, Granny, I'm going again, and I won't come back. She said, Son, I thought you weren't coming back that time. I said, Where's Mama? I want to tell her goodbye. She said, I told your mother that you were gone. And so she rushed outside praying. We live in one of those old-fashioned houses like they used to build in this part of the country of the porch, you know, nearly all the way around it. And she was over on the north side. I heard her then coming around to the south side praying at the top of her voice. And I said, Granny, my grandmother said, I'll go get her. And I said, well, I want to tell her goodbye. And so she got up because she was holding me in her arm. She laid my head on the pillow and, and started to leave, and I grabbed a hold of her. And I was afraid, and I, so I said, Granny, 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 don't leave me, don't leave me. And so she came back. Well, actually, she called out. She took again and run her arm under my head and shoulders and held me in her arms, and she called my mother. 
but she couldn't make her hear. Though she yelled quite loudly, she couldn't make her hear because she was, my mother was praying so loud, she couldn't hear anything. And so I just simply said to her, tell mama I said goodbye. Tell mama I said I love her. Tell mama I said I appreciate her. Staying with we children when my daddy forsook us when I was just six years old. Tell mama I appreciate her. Trying to make a living for four children until she finally had a complete nervous, physical, and mental breakdown. And, and I said, tell mama that I said, if I've ever put a wrinkle in her face or a gray hair in her head, I'm sorry. I asked her to forgive me. Tell mama I said goodbye. And then I said, Granny, when Mama's health failed, I came to live with my grandmother on my mother's side when I was nine years old. And you've been a second mother to me. And I appreciate that. And my grandmother would also always say, my granny would always say, kiss me right there, kiss me right there. And so I kissed her on the cheek and my heart stopped. And, and I felt the circulation cut off way down at the end of my toes, faster than you can say it, ankles, knees, stuff, hip, hip stomach, and out I leaped, out of my body. Down I went till the lights of the earth above me faded away. Down, 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 down. I know it was only a few seconds, but it seemed like an eternity. I know it happened 50 some odd years ago, but it seemed like it happened last Saturday night. It's just as real as if it happened to me last night. Spiritual things never grow old. Down until the darkness encompassed me around about until you couldn't see your hand if there's one inch in front of your face. And the further down you went, the hotter it became. Until finally down beneath you, you saw fingers of light playing on the walls of darkness. And you came to the bottom of the pit. And then there's an incline that goes down further. And down you floated towards those gates. I can see them yet. Once you go through those gates, I knew I couldn't come back. I slowed down my descent. That same creature met me. That same creature put, put his hand on my arm, right arm, to escort me in. And thanks be unto God, there was a voice that spoke. It was a male voice, not a female or woman, a man's voice. But he said, I don't know. It was a strange tongue. But when he spoke, that whole place shook like there's an earthquake on. That creature took his hand off of my arm. And there was like a magnet would have pulled you to my back. I just came floating backwards, just floating backwards until I got back to the bottom of the pit. And then I came floating up. And the only difference was the first time I came up on the porch outside the, uh, the room, south bedroom. The second time I came up at the foot of the bed for just a second faster than you snap your finger. I could see my body lying there on the bed. I could see my grandmother. She held me in her arms. And I leaped from the foot of the bed inside my body through my mouth like a man would slip his foot inside of his boot in the morning time. And I got backside my body and we say in the world and so I said to Granny I'm going again and the third time's charm I won't be back and again she said son I didn't think you was coming back that time and I said where's grandpa I want to tell him goodbye she said son you know granddad went down to the end down the east part of town to collect rent from some of his houses and I said oh I knew that I'd forgotten that but I said tell grandpa I said goodbye Tell Grandpa I love him. Tell Grandpa I appreciate him. When I had no home, he gave me one. He's the only daddy I've ever known. Tell him I love him. Tell him goodbye. I left a word for my sister, only sister, uh, and, and then my two brothers, and my heart stopped. And, and, and the circulation cut off. And I leaped out of my body. And I began to descend. And I'll be honest with you, I thought till this third time, th you know, this isn't real. It's just an hallucination. Uh, this can't be right. But as I went down through that darkness, I was afraid. I cried out in the darkness, God, God, I belong to I the, belong church. the church. I've been baptized, I've been baptized in, water. in water. I'm trying to tell him I shouldn't be going this way. I listened for an answer. There was no answer. Only the sound of my own voice as it echoed through the darkness. You ever been in Carl's Bad Caverns? or any caverns and shout out something, your voice will come ricochet and back, so to speak, to you. And, and so then again, the second time, I cried a little louder, God, God, God I belong to I the, belong church. the church. I've been baptized, I've been baptized in, water. in water. I listened for an answer, but there's no answer. And the third time, if I could do it just the way I did it, I'd scare you out of your wits. I literally screamed, God, 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 God. I belong to the I church. But there's no answer. And so the third time I came to the bottom of the pit, 
And the third time that creature met me. And the third time, thanks be unto God, that voice spoke. And woo -hoo, whatever it was he said, it worked. That creature took his hand off my arm. I came floating back. I came floating up. As I came up through the darkness, I began to pray. You see, that inward man's the real man, the spirit man. And I began to call on God in the name of Jesus to save me and to forgive me and to cleanse me. And the only difference was first time I came up on the porch, the second time at the foot of the bed, the third time right beside the bed. Leaped right inside my body. When I got back inside my body, my natural voice picked up my prayer right in the middle of a sentence. And I continued to pray so loud. Now this is 1933, 22nd day of April, Saturday night. And we live just, just about a block and a half off of what they call Millionaire Row. That's the richest people in town live there. And folks tell me that traffic was blocked. You didn't have all the traffic in those days you have today. But you see, this is a better part of town and more people had on over. They tell me that traffic was blocked from two blocks around from every side of our house. Me and Mama was praying so loud. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Somebody said, was you scared? You better bet you were scared. Amen. Amen. We prayed so loud, we blocked traffic for two blocks around. But thanks be unto God, hallelujah, it felt to me like a two-ton weight rolled off of my chest. And I was born again. And I looked at the clock on Grandpa's mantelpiece, and it said 20 minutes till 8 o'clock. And all of that happened in 10 minutes. On the 16th day of August, 1933, all that day I knew I was dying. She had been dead. I knew I'm dying. It got to be 106 degrees. It can get 106 easily sometimes down Texas. I was farther south than here, and even here over 100 easy in August. 106 degrees. We had no air conditioning in 1933. If you had anything at all, just a fan to blow a little air around. We just had the windows and the doors open, whatever air could circulate. It's got to be 106 degrees. It's over 100 by noontime. Yet my body is so cold that they got me wrapped in blankets. My body's so cold that they got all of the hot water bottles, they, they heat bricks and wrap them up in newspaper and in blankets, and I'm encased with all these blankets and hot bricks and, and try, trying to warm me up because my body is cold as ice. And at 1.30 in the afternoon, as my young brother, nine years old, stood there by my bed, death fastened his final throes upon me. And I said to Pat, run and get Mama quick. I'm dying. I want to tell her goodbye. And he ran out of the room like a shot. When he left the room, the whole room lit up, brighter than sun shining on snow. You know how it glistens when sun shines on snow? That whole room lit up. That whole room was filled with a cloud that was bright and shining. And I left my body and went up into that cloud. Let me tell you this, Pat come running back to the kitchen, hollering, Mama, Mama, Granny, Granny, Ken's a dying, Ken's a dying. And she said, I was closer to the what? kitchen door, and I ran up the hall into the dining room to come into your bedroom, and I couldn't enter it. The bedroom's full of something. That's what I saw. I, I can't go in. I recognized the presence of God and back, back against the dining room table and bowed my head to pray. Granny, her mother, came behind her. The door's open. The door shutter's open. She run right up against that open opening and bounced back like you'd hit a rubber ball. And so she said, as she looked then, see, she didn't look. She said, why, well, Lily, the room, I can't see the bed. I can't see Ken. I can't see his body. The room is full of a cloud, like a thick fog. It's white and glistening. And I can't see the dresser, and I can't see the bed. I can't see anything. The room's full of that. That's the glory of God. <laughs> and she said, Granny, back to back, about halfway of the dining room, made another run. <laughs> and hit that opening and bounced off of it. She, the third time, backed all the way across the room and ran across the dining room and hit the open door and, and bounced off. And she seemed to be so overcome, Mama said, with the presence of God that she hung on to the door facing. She said it was 10 minutes. You talk like it's 10 seconds. It was 10 minutes before we could get into the room. It was 10 minutes. We couldn't enter in until the cloud disappeared. And as soon as it disappeared, I rushed up to the bed and took your hand and you were dead. 
And about that time you said, Mama, I'm not going to die now. Because see up there in that glory, I heard a voice speak, this time in the English language. I believe it was Jesus. I didn't see him, just heard the voice. It's a man's voice said, Go back, go back, go back to the earth. You can't come yet. Your work on earth's not done. And I descended. I never will forget, here's a sequel to what I'm talking about. When I was bedfast, uh, my grandmother had a cousin, and they'd go to visit one another occasionally. And when I was bedfast, Aunt Lizy, as we called her, along with her daughter, Lorena, would come to visit us. Now, you didn't mention God. You see, uh, the, the last time I'd seen, I guess, she was over 60 years of age, somewhere in her, around 60, I guess. And, and so she said, uh, but you didn't mention God to her. I mean, her, her daughter would just get her stopped some way or another. She'd just talk rant and rave. Every preacher ought to be shot. Why, there is no God. Why, when you're, when you're dead, you're just dead like a dog. There is no God. There is no heaven. There is no hell. Every preacher ought to be shot. Every church house ought to be burned down. They're just fooling people, getting the money out of them. They're just in it for their money and ranting and rave. Their daughter would get up sometimes and, you know, and just get to working with her and finally get her to shut up, you know and get the conversation off something else so, so we'd learn through the year. Don't, don't ever bring up the subject of God or the Bible or Jesus or anything to ain't lies because she'll just go to ranting and a raving. Well, I was healed then, 1934, and in the year 1934, she'd come to visit us every once in a while, sit in the sick room with the rest of them because they'd sit in there to visit so I could get in on it. And, and so in the process of time then, uh, about 10 years later, so she must have been about 62. About 10 years later, during World War Number 2, my wife and I were out on the field in field ministry, holding revival meetings, going from church to church. Uh, but anyway, we were in, and my mother-in-law said uh, to me, uh, and, and dad-in-law uh, said, you know so-and-so, Lorena. Yeah, yeah. Well, said, uh, she said, if Kenneth comes, get, have him to come. Have him to come to see us. And so uh, it's important. And so on. And there was, seemed to be such an urgency about it until we got the address and my wife and I, she was with me, knocked on the door. The door opened and I recognized Lorena but of course she hadn't seen me since last time she saw me. I was bed fast, weighed 89 pounds. And so I told her, I said, I'm Kenneth. Oh, she said, Kenneth. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Opened the door then. And she said, she took one of my hands in both of hers and began to cry. I said, oh, Kenneth, Kenneth, Kenneth. Do you know how mama was? You just didn't mention God to her. I said, yeah. She said she's here in the bedroom in a, in a hospital bed in, at home. The doctor just left a few moments ago. She's in a coma. If we can stir her up, would you talk to her, please? Would, would you talk to her? And I said, well, surely I will if I can. I said, I sure will. And so she led me, both of my hands, uh, or my one hand and both of hers, up to a door, took one hand, opened the door. My wife followed and we went inside, and there this dear woman, 70 some odd years old, lying there on the hospital bed, struggling for breath, death upon her. Doctors just left some minutes before and said she'll not come out of it. Lorena souped over and said, Mama, Mama, there's no, no sign. Shook her a little bit and got out there and said, Mama, Mama, Mama. Somewhere or another, her mouth open, stayed open all the time, never did shut it. She said, uh, 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 uh. I understand. She said, what is it? She said, this is Lorena. Yeah, my baby. Never, never moved her lips, just somewhere or another way down in my way. Uh. She said, Mama, you remember Aunt Sally and her daughter Lily? And you remember Lily's boy that was bed fast so long? Kenneth, the one that made the preacher? When she said preacher, she never batted her eyes, but she made an effort to raise up, and Lorena helped her. And she reached her hand. I said, Ken, Ken, where are you? Where are you? Where are you, Ken? Where are you? I took her hand. She said, oh, Ken. Oh, Ken. I said, I said there was no God. I said there's no hell. You're a preacher. Tell me there's not any hell. Tell me there's not any hell. I'm so afraid. It's dark. It's dark. It's so dark. It's so dark. I'm so afraid. It's so dark. You're a preacher. You ought to know. Tell me there's not any hell. But I couldn't tell her there's not any hell. I was going to tell her there's a heaven. 
and she can go there. But she exhausted what strength she had and fell back on the pillow under unconsciousness and died and went to hell. And while we were in this well-lighted room enjoying the pleasures of this life, that poor dear soul is down there in the darkness crying out, why didn't I listen? The fearful and the unbelieving will be turned into hell where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Every head bowed, every eye closed. One of these days, it may not be long. We're everyone going to leave here. There is a hell to shun. There is a heaven to gain. 